yes so but this is just linear so here we speak on linear error band let us uh, examine this function this is the uh, the simplest one in, in analysis uh, so the, squ the the square function actually this doesn't doesn't satisfy this error bound because it is very flat near near zero however if we consider this function this is uh, I, we call modulus this modulus beta t equal t if and i consider this quantity this is the usual integral this is just the distance square of the distance from x to the sub level set which exactly which coincide with my function so this error bound this uh, this function doesn't satisfy this error bound but satisfy similar property considering this instead of the distance considering this integral this is what we call that we what we call nonlinear error bound that the same inequality is uh, we ask the same inequality to hold but instead of sorry but instead of just considering the only the distance we consider the the integral of this modulus beta beta is a modulus this is a positive function which takes positive uh, values except at zero what where it equal it is it possibly equal to to zero so this is the definition of nonlinear error bound which actually covers the linear one just taking beta to be the constant function or one also uh, it is of frequent use the case of holderian error bound when where beta is the the this the uh, identity function actually the interpretation of this inequality is the same as in the linear case suppose that the function beta is increasing this also this inequality also tells us that the when the uh, the value of the function goes to zero for instance this forces this quantity to go to zero and so also the error goes to, to, to zero. So there is this same meaning, but for possibly a large, uh, a large family of functions satisfying this error inequality. The question here is the same. We are asking uh, when, uh, when uh, such a constant sigma exists, which is equivalent to the existence of error bound. And if it is possible to give expressions of this, of, of this sigma, yes, or, and importantly, to give a dual version of this inequality involving dual or dual concept relying on the function f, actually the self-dependential. Yes, but there is an uh, there is an, a practical situation where this nonlinear uh, error bound comes into play. Let us recall this condition, palais made condition, which is also frequently used in the theory of in calculus of variation in PDE and so on, we for simplicity suppose that the function f is differentiable. We say that the function f satisfies this palais made condition whenever we have a sequence such that the value f x n is bounded, the gradient, the gradient goes to zero. Necessarily, we can find some subsequence with which converges. Yes. Actually, this can be this definition can be put or can be quantified in terms of nonlinear error bound. Why? Let us recall the argument behind this definition. So we can always find um, uh, an if one over n minimizer sequence. This is always possible. So let why why n uh, sequence that which is minimizing sequence. Using the equivalent variational principle, we always can find another point, x n, which which minimizes this function, and where the value of the function at this new point is below the initial value. Yes, this means because y n is minimizing, this means that x n is minimizing too, and because of this property that x n is a minimizer of this function. This implies that the gradient of f at xn goes to zero. So 
if we suppose palais male, this ensures that Xn has a converging subsequence, which will be which will be indeed a minimizer of the function f. So actually, this is uh, generally the argument behind this palais male condition. But actually, this condition can be put into this nonlinear error bound. Just consider. So what we we did. What we do is to consider this this modulus, modulus beta of t is the infimum of f x, whose distance, uh, whose where the distance from x to the sublevel set is equal t. Actually, we can check easily that when the function f satisfy Pauli's male, this uh, in quantitative terms, this is a nonlinear error bound. With this function, with this modulus beta, yes, and even more, we can uh, we can change beta to a no decreasing and continuous one. Yes, actually, this is uh, this is not um, so. This is not the uh, the main one. Actually, under Pauli's male condition, we can also uh, we we also have a kind of error bound. Yes, but not uh, almost linear, but, but uh, considering instead of the function f, the gradient of the function f. With this uh, new uh, modulus uh, expressed almost similarly to the one here, this is the infimum of the gradient with this condition. So actually, and, and this one is, all, is only the definition of Palais May. Yes. This is this one is only the definition of Palaismel. Actually, Palaismel ensures that the this modulus function is positive in this sense. Yes, this is the role of Palaismel. Actually, for every every function f, we can, we can define this. This inequality is just by definition, similarly as here. But Palaismel is just to confirm that that this function, this what we call modulus actually is positive. So what we succeeded to do is that transform Palais male condition with which is a qualitative property into a quanti quantitative property. And what uh, Palais male condition proves is that, is that this inequality here actually implies this behavior of this error bound of the function. Yes. Actually, this is uh, this is what uh, we are uh, we want to do is to represent to represent this nonlinear error bound in terms of this almost linear error bound, but given in the dual. Actually, this is the gradient. This is an element of the dual. Yes. So to to do this in a little bit general framework, let us recall. Uh, actually, as we saw now, the, the Euclid variance in principle is the main tool behind this Palais male condition. So consider this. So the, this is the statement of the uh, variational error, uh, variational principle, Euclid variational principle. Yes, that can be put using, can be uh, right in using the, the strong slope uh, by Di Giorgi Marino at Tosk. The same statement of Eklund variation in principle can be right in that way. Uh, each time I have an uh, uh, approximate minimum of the function, I can get I can get estimation of the of the strong slope. If I do the contraposition of this property, I we, we easily arrive at this inequality. Yes, that actually this is the the, the greatest of man constant, which is bounded below by this quantity. Yes, and here the as you this is the main theorem in uh, for error, li error linear bound. In order to be sure that an error bound exists, it suffices to to have an estimation by below of uh, by of this of this quantity. Only we need to deal with this trunk slope. Of this function f, and it is easily in general. It is easy to not easy. I mean, uh, we can calculate this this term. For instance, we know that for convex and lower semi semi continuous function, 
this is just the distance from zero to the self differential. So if we have structure of our problem, we can have uh, up lower bound of this quantity. Also in the case, in the affine case, when F is the maximum of affine function, actually we can do, we can calculate the sub differential of this fu the function F and find the value of the, of the strong slope. Also, also if FC1, the, we have this equality and also we can, one can as, uh, as have been done by many mathematicians, uh, we can relate the strong slope to uh, given concept of the sub differential. Yes, this will allow uh, sub differential criteria. So this is for the linear case. Just to specify to uh, to uh, the linear the affine the polyhedral set when my sub level set is polyhedral. Actually, this uh, the use of uh, equivalent variational principle allow us to uh, allow us to give the exact expression of this uh, the sharp or the greatest of my constant. Actually, since we don't have I do not have time, I only give the case of system uh, inequality systems. So you applying this the, this concept of uh, grad of strong slope, we prove that actually the best constant is the the uh, the smallest singular singular value of the matrix A in the linear case. So this is this example is just to to see, to tell you that yes um, this opera this formula can be made operati operative and we can give uh, surprising relation uh, relation and x and formula like this one. So let us go to the nonlinear case. Uh, there is a clever approach introduced first by Korvolek in the late 90s, which consists of changing the metric. Actually, this is the main, uh, the main result. Actually, together we obtained this uh, uh, slight, uh, slight improvement. Actually, we can always find uh, an equivalent metric with this property. So uh, in the new metric, actually this is the formula of this metric. Yes, just to, for, uh, to rem not to remember. Yes, to show that it is not quite uh, easy the, how is given this metric. In this new metric, the slope with respect to this new metric is given uh, in this simple form, related in this form to the, st the strong slope with respect to the origin metric and the distance from and the distance is distance in this new metric is given actually using this uh, this quantity which appears in uh, our nonlinear error bound actually the difficulty with this changing of the metric is that as as we see here how is defined the distance from gamma t gamma t this is the curve from uh, from relating x to y the distance from y to c. Actually, in order that this, this is a metric, we need to impose some condition on the, our modulus. Actually, it, is proved by, it was proved by Corbo like that this new definition defines or gives a new met, a metric provided that the value of, the, of this modulus at zero is positive or this uh, integral condition. Yes, and using this definition, this new metric, this succeeded to, uh, to have this error bound. So we arrived, this is uh, what we could provide in this work is to uh, provide this uh, also no linear uh, sufficient condition for no linear error bound, removing, removing this condition on beta that removing this condition on, on beta. But the most important thing in our result is that we do not base on a change of metric. Actually, actually this, uh, the proof we gave is completely, completely uh, dependent on the variational proof and in the variational uh, principle. Actually, what we, what we use is a family of 
metrics that uh, we um, we define that satisfy this property. Actually, they are ap approximate in a well well manner our original metric, and we do not care on the gradient of the, the slope of this function. So this is the, the result we obtain, and uh, with um, uh, with. Uh, only assuming that the modulus beta, beta is lower semi-continuous. Yes, and just uh, to, to finish, uh, let us check again the convex case. Unfortunately, uh, in the convex case, it is not possible to have the exact equality. Yes, we have uh, an example, yes, which shows that Actually, this inequality here, or even with simple modulus, that the equality may be very large, actually uh, proportional in terms of one over k, and k may be very large. Yes. So uh, this is the extension to uh, to uh, no complete metric space, but I don't have time. So this is the result I want to uh, to present to you. That this is. Uh, no linear error bound with less uh, condition on the modulus beta. Yeah. Just to finish, I gave, I don't have to, to present the no linear, just to list of references where um, many, uh, actually this is a few of the, of one, there are many and many others. This is one, one slide and this is the other slide. Okay, so I finish my time. It is okay. Now, Yelsin, we do not hear you. You could use uh, a few more minutes that you, you have time. Ah, yes, okay, I didn't yes. hear. No, I, so thank you very much. Yes, please go ahead. So, yes, no, actually this is the, um, the result we obtain in the, the complete metric space. <coughs> This looks like this exactly the same as in Korvolak uh, work in 2002. It has been extended by Korvolak Montriano in 2008. But here I say that in the, co the framework of, of complete metric space, we remove this uh, extra condition on the modulus beta because we do not need to introduce a new metrics. Yeah. So the last result is on the what we do in uh, no complete metric space. Actually, here we all know that the uh, variational principle could not be uh, used. Actually, we succeeded to obtain almost similar result considering or using this um, epsilon uh, our, or approximate slope. Actually, this is a notion which was introduced by Sam, Simon, but for different reasons. Actually, he introduced it for or to give Simply simple proof of um, of Rockefeller formula on the maximality of the subdivision. Actually, and here is remember that in the convex case, this is the when zero epsilon is zero. This is just the strong usual slope. So here we allow this uh, error or this margin minus epsilon, and it is uh, nice to see that if I take the sup the supremum over epsilon. Which we, which is exactly this one, correspond to the value of zero. This is uh, maybe larger than the usual slope. Yes. Actually, we we have uh, the counterpart in no complete metric spaces of this the error bound I presented. So let X be a metric space, a modulus beta without any condition. Even we could remove the lower summing continuity of the function. So for every function just which is bounded below, we have this uh, nonlinear error bound. Here, my nonlinear error bound, yes? And the uh, I could, I can give lower bound using this epsilon or approximate slope. Actually, this is, I suppose that this is even new in the linear case outside complete, complete metric space. When beta is the constant one, we obtain this, inequ this inequality. So, and also here, the, Ipsi, the approximate slope, we can also operatively calculate it. Actually, in the convex case, this is the distance from zero to the epsilon subdifferential of the, of the function. 
Yes. So uh, the, uh, this is the result in no complete metric space. Yes. And even in uh, this is also even in complete in complete metric space, uh, it will this also give uh, also give a uh, way way to calculate this uh, sharp uh, of my constant. Okay. Now I am okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Abdurrahim. Do you have any questions for Abdurrahim? You May can I? unmute yourself. Ah, yes, okay. I've already unmuted, probably. I was the first one to unmute myself. So thank yes. you, Abdurrahim, for the presentation. Uh, it's good, first of all, that you keep uh, doing good things after moving to Europe. Maybe you do even more beautiful things now. Welcome to Arab Bounds. Uh, yes, thank you very much. This, this, this is another this point will, where we could have intersections. By coincidence, yeah. we just uh, completed a paper with my student who is currently also uh, participating in, in this session on nonlinear error bounds. And uh, just a couple of days ago, in fact. Uh, so it is, it is, we, we didn't touch uh, non-complete spaces and this is probably the thing which we should study now because uh, honestly, I don't know how to work with uh, non-complete spaces and this idea of epsilon slope looks promising. So it, we, we have something to study and uh, I will send our paper to you uh, in the next few days, and hopefully we will find some intersections. So no yes. questions, just just uh, good positive words. Thank you for your talk. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. I would be very happy to 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 read your paper and of course to have some intersection on that on that topic. And to, I hope to read your paper soon, if it yes. is already a paper. Yes. Yes. Of course. Okay. Thank you, Darhin. Any further questions or comments? Uh, can, can I ask a Please question? Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the very nice talk. Uh, one thing, I, ah, yes, so about uh, this slide. So I also have interest in a robot, but my, uh, for, for example, suppose that I'm given, I'm given some F that I sus and I suspect, I suspect that it might have some error bound uh, with some specific pattern. So the one- you mean, you mean linear one, yes? Uh, no, no, no. I guess uh, perhaps no linear, no linear one, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a very basic confirmation. So in, in, in if I, if the left-hand side is positive, then you, I get a, a, oh, I think it was in, in so if, if the left-hand side is positive, then I get an error bound with that specific. Uh, uh, you mean, uh, yes? Is this correct? Ah, yes, actually, you mean this, um, Actually, this is the, the definition, yes. If you mean yes. this, that's a left, the left-hand side, yes. So, so the, the point is, is that, oh, okay, sorry. No, please, go ahead. So I guess, I guess the point is that the, the right-hand right side should be easier to... to... Uh, yes, actually, this is the, yes. Uh, actually, this is the... The remark that we we, we observe frequently when we uh, in duality theory, you know, you have primal problem, and the hope is that when you translate your pro problem into the dual, the dual could be more easier to to treat. Actually, this is the uh, this is the idea here too. Actually, this uh, that this uh, constant here is strictly positive. This is actually the definition of. Error bound or mm -hmm. no linear error bound. 
So what we, uh, the people try to do is uh, uh, instead of checking this, that this con constant here is positive, uh, uh, instead consider this other one. Yes. And here it is, uh, it is clear that in, so let us go back to the linear one. It is even, this one. Actually, this is just the, that this the one is positive is the existence or that is saying that F has uh, an error bound. So what the theorem say that instead of checking this, it suffices to calculate the gradient of F, for example, of if you, your function is convex, just to write the subdifferential of this function. For example, here, imagine that your function is affine, maximum of affine function. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have formula to calculate the subdifferential. Uh, next, uh, use the distance, calculate the distance, and estimate the infimum. So, actually, what that this theorem uh, say that says us that in order to check the positivity of this constant, so the existence of error bound, it suffices to uh, check that this constant here is strictly positive. Yes, the, okay. the things are easier in the dual case. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we need to move to our next speaker. Thank you, Abdel Rahim, for thank your you, talk. Asin, thank you, everybody. Could you stop sharing, please? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, stop um, sharing. There should be a button saying stop yes. sharing. No, the, you're, you're going too far. Uh, just on the ah. screen, somewhere you have a button. Stop sharing. Probably at the top. Yeah. Ah, no. Okay, yes. that's good. I have stopped sharing. Russell. Ah, you yes. Did. <laughs> Thank you very much.